Live from Hazard, Kentucky, this is Jam and John's Wrestling News. Here's your news for Monday, April 22nd, 2019. I'm sure all of you heard the big news over the weekend that CM Punk made an appearance at an indie wrestling show on Friday night while wearing a mask. Now, Robbie Fox of Barstool Sports noted the following about CM Punk's appearance. Robbie Fox tweeted on Twitter, This isn't the first time Punk has done this. For what it's worth, he's appeared at indie shows as a mask character for years now. It doesn't happen on a regular basis, but it's happened like three or four times since 2015, I believe. Some of it was filmed for Wrestling Road Diaries Free, but I believe Colt and Punk had their fallout before that was released and it got cut. Now, fans have also pointed out that in 2016, Punk had said the following regarding a possible return to wrestling during an interview for the UFC. CM Punk said, It's not going to be anything televised. It's going to be me in an effing ninja outfit wrestling some of my buddies. And with all this buzz going around online about CM Punk appearing at this independent wrestling show in Milwaukee, Dave Meltzer of F4WOnline.com recently commented on AEW President Tony Khan having a strong interest in CM Punk. Meltzer said, If CM Punk wants to wrestle, he was Tony Khan's first pick before Jericho, before the Young Bucks, before anyone. If he wants to wrestle, he can wrestle and make very good money if that's what he wants. Thanks to SESScoops.com for the quote. And in addition to CM Punk appearing at the indie wrestling event over the weekend, word is coming out that Punk appeared at a freelance wrestling event on December 4, 2015. Punk was allegedly under a cloak and managed the team while being referred to as a nameless mentor. Dave Meltzer of F4WOnline.com also commented on rumors going around that Dean Ambrose could be retiring from the wrestling business once his WWE contract expires. Meltzer said, I've heard people say that he's retiring. I don't believe at his age he's going to retire forever. I mean, whoever has at his age, especially at his level where you can make a couple of million a year, that's a lot to retire. Especially since at some point he absolutely loved wrestling because he wouldn't be this good if he didn't. He survived on the indie scene for as long as he did, but for whatever reason you know he feels like he needs time off, and whatever it is, he's not happy. Meltzer said, He's had so many farewells it's not even funny. It's different. My gut is that they don't expect him to go to AEW. They expect him to come back and they want to make it a big deal, and when he's ready to come back, he's happy to come back, and the fans see him as a big star. He's burned out and he's unhappy. If he's unhappy, then whatever he's unhappy about probably isn't going to change. If he's burned out and he needs a rest, then he'll probably come back. Thanks to ringsidenews.com for the quotes. ProWrestlingSheet.com is reporting that following last week's WWE Superstar Shakeup, WWE management made the decision to move new Raw stars Andrari and Zelina Vega back to the SmackDown Live brand. In addition to Andrari being listed as a SmackDown Live superstar on WWE's website, Zelina's husband Aleister Black is also listed as a SmackDown Live superstar, despite Black being announced for Raw. Zelina is currently still listed as a Raw superstar. And I have an update on this situation with Aleister Black and Zelina Vega and Andrari going to SmackDown. According to PWInsider.com, it appears that one of the reasons for Andrari and Selena Vega moving back to SmackDown Live was due to the request of the Fox Network. There are reportedly plans to spotlight Latino WWE stars on Fox's Spanish language station, Fox Deportes. Aleister Black was moved to SmackDown not just for being married to Selena, but also because there are apparently creative ideas for him on the SmackDown brand. On the latest episode of Being the Elite, it was announced that the tag team Private Party, Peter Avalon, and Leva Bates, a.k.a. Blue Pants, have all signed with All Elite Wrestling. Twitter account at WrestleVotes noted the following about this year's WWE Money in the Bank pay-per-view by tweeting on Twitter, Strong push within the creative team to really have this year's Men's Money in the Bank winner coming out of the whole process looking like a star. The feeling backstage is that they have completely blown the winners and cash-ins the last two years. PostWrestling.com is reporting that Cesaro is moving to the WWE Raw brand, which could effectively break up his tag team with Sheamus. Cesaro and Sheamus, better known as The Bar, have been teaming together since the fall of 2016. 
Also, Samoa Joe appears to be recovered from his illness and is scheduled to be on Monday Night Raw tonight. As previously noted, Joe was in Montreal last week for the Superstar Shakeup, but was sick and his segment was pulled from the show. Joe is rumored to be feuding with Braun Strowman on the Raw brand. After the War Raiders had their name changed to the Viking Experience, the WWE has once again changed the team's name to the Viking Raiders. The Viking Experience name was largely met with criticism from fans. Good night, sweet friends. Nah, I'm just playing. I hated that name too. And finally, here on Jam and John's Wrestling News, Dustin Rhodes, aka Gold Dust, posted the following message to his Instagram account. Dustin said, Hello, WWB Universe. To begin, I want to say just how much I appreciate you allowing me to entertain you over these long and winding years. Being the son of the legendary dream has been and will always be an immense honor and blessing to me and I have always done my best to fill his shoes while transitioning into my own. I have had so many ups and downs in our great business, and I have learned from every time that I have fallen down and every mistake I have made. My life has been an open book for you fans and friends all over this wide world. You've been there to see my trials and tribulations and have stuck with me through it all. You've hated me, you've loved me, you've laughed with me, and you've cried with me. You've immensely enjoyed my antics and entertainment and I would like to think that I've done a good job, that I've done my father proud. I was born straight into the thick of this business. It is and has always been my life, and I have loved every moment of the ride. I want to thank you all for the unwavering support you have given me. Thank you. With that being said, I've been putting my body through quite a bit these last 30 years, and many opportunities that have been presented to me have taken a back seat to my love of wrestling. I have requested my release from WWE and it has been granted. I am taking this time to explore some of those many opportunities. Life is too short to not take all the chances you feel driven to take, and I will give this next chapter my full focus and effort. I would appreciate your continued support as I turn this page in my life and go wherever this journey may lead me next. WWE has given me and my family such incredible years and experiences and I have nothing but respect and warmth for everyone here. The roster is stacked with all inspiring talent who want the best and are breaking down all barriers to grab that coveted elusive brass ring. To WWE and to each and every one of my co-workers, I love you, I appreciate you, and I thank you for loving and taking care of me for so long. Keep doing your thing and find you out there. Thank you so very much and God bless. Remember and never forget the name of Gold Dust. Till next time. Well, well said words there from Dustin Rhodes. I remember the first time I seen Gold Dust back around 1999. I discovered Gold Dust through a video game called WWF Warzone for the PlayStation. My mom used to work at this uh, video store back in the day. And I remember getting that game and renting it. And seeing Gold Dust in the game, I thought that he was such an unusual character. And he just really really captured my imagination. I wanted to know more about this character. Why was he obsessed with gold? Why did he paint his face black and gold? And why did he act so strange? Also, there was an alternative attire in the game that uh, was a attire that he wore during a match that was a little bit NSFW. I can't really say it here, you know, gotta keep it PG. But uh, I was five years old when I first seen Gold Dust and I thought that he was a strange person, but a really, really great wrestler and a really great character. And then like around 2003, when he came back to the WWE and he had that tag team with Booker T, that was awesome. I really loved that whenever they won the world tag team titles and stuff. And uh, back in 2012, I got to meet Goldust. Uh, The summer that I graduated from high school, one of my friends from high school told me that Dustin was going to be coming to the Perry County Public Library for an autograph signing. And uh, I went and I met him and got him to do the... uh, And it was so cool to, like, experience that, you know. And he's a really awesome guy. And I told him, you know, man, my favorite moment from uh, your time in WWE was when you was inside 7-Eleven with Booker T. And you looked at Booker T and you said... If you let me have a drink of your Slurpee, 
I will let you have a bite of my wiener. And he loved that. He thought that was just so great. And uh, I told him that I wanted to be a commentator for WWE and a commentator in pro wrestling. And he told me, you can do it, man. you got to work hard and you can do anything. And uh, I accomplished that last year. I got to do commentary for Appalachia Mountain Wrestling. So uh, thank you so much, Dustin, for inspiring me to chase my dreams. And uh, also, Dustin is going to be wrestling his brother Cody at the Double or Nothing event. So that will be Dustin's final match. And uh, man, he definitely deserves retirement. Uh, Dustin, thank you so much for all the years of uh, entertaining me and many fans as Gold Dust and as Black Rain and all the other great characters over the years. And uh, I wish you peace, happiness, and joy during your retirement. And uh, I will definitely never forget the name of Gold Dust. That is your news for Monday, April 22nd, 2019. Happy Earth Day to all of you. Please show some love to the planet and recycle. Don't trash the planet. Give a hoot. Don't pollute. I still remember that. Sorry if I sound a little bit gross. I'm kind of going through a sinus infection right now trying to fight that off. But check back here tomorrow for another Jam and John's Wrestling News Flash Briefing on Amazon Alexa devices, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, and iTunes. Follow me on Twitter at John Caldwell, J-O-N-C-O-L-W-E-L-L. Follow me on Instagram, The Jam and John. If you'd like to sponsor Jam and John's Wrestling News or your wrestling promotion wanting to get your next big event out, you can email me, jzcaldwell at gmail.com. That's J-Z-C-O-L-W-E-L-L at gmail.com. Big shout out to Ryan Hurdle and Tony Nelson for subscribing to my Patreon. You too can subscribe to me by going to patreon.com slash jam and John. I have free packages on there ranging from free to $7. Not a whole lot of money. I would really appreciate it if you supported me a little bit financially. Once again, that's patreon.com slash jam and John. This is Jam and John saying thanks, goodbye, and I'll see you tomorrow.